Hey Stormbounders, I want to take a minute to go over balance changes for the month of November. I'm recording this on the morning of the 1st, so I haven't had a chance to play with any of these yet, but I want to give you my first impressions. Green Gale Serpents, I think that this is actually a really good change. The ability does a little bit less than it used to. The main body is a little bit stronger than it used to. I'm going to focus on level 5 because that's where I know the cards and that's where I play the cards. Uh, your mileage may vary at lower levels. But at level 5 at least, if this attacks one enemy, you have the same strength. If it attacks two enemy, you get one less strength. I think that that's pretty reasonable. Uh, it does now buff a dragon if you play it with Eloth. Uh, it buffs Eloth a little bit less than it used to. I don't think that that's going to be too much of a problem. Uh, but it's a nice way to tune down the card a little bit, uh, reduce the overall strength without completely killing it. Uh, I do think that that four body main strength uh, will probably actually make a difference. Uh, that's gonna that's gonna be the edge that you need uh, if you're using it as a runner without triggering it in some of your matches. Uh, and it feels a lot less bad to just open with this. If your hand is, if your only playable cards on three mana are uh, Green Gale and Unstable Build, for example, you're going to feel a little less bad about putting that Green Gale out on the board to start the game. Saying in Ironclad, we have Sound Drivers. The movement is now 1 and the strength is down from 7 to 6 at level 5. I think that this is fantastic. Sound Drivers is, is really going to be a card that you want to include in a lot of Ironclad decks now, uh, especially aggressive decks. Uh, with Green Gale, maybe uh, buffing dragons a little bit less. Maybe instead of Eloth for that unpredictable movement, you put in Sound Drivers. Eloth is nice because it works on an empty board. With Sound Drivers, you do need something on the board. But um, the movement, I think, is big. You can, uh, if your opponent pockets some units, you can clear the protecting unit with uh, destructo bots and then sound drivers will push that destructo bots to their side of the board while also clearing the unit in the corner i think that this is going to be a really good card uh it's you know six strength is is pretty much on rate for a three mana with movement uh with a couple of exceptions that we'll talk about in a moment uh, so you you never feel bad about playing something that's uh, six strength for three mana if the ability is worth it. And I think the ability is worth it here. Wrinkled Four Top Men and Trekking Alder Men. Uh, I'll talk about these kind of in the same because they both got the same buff. Uh, they both go from seven to eight strength at the top level. Uh, this is important for anything that does have that uh, after surviving damage effect. It has to actually survive damage. And at 7 strength, Trekking Alderman and Wrinkled Foretop Men just were not surviving the trade with the West Wind, the trade with the Lost Psyches. Now, at least, there's only one 3 mana card in the game that will clear that 8 strength. Uh, I think that this is actually pretty good. Uh, I do, I do think Trekking Alderman will see some play. I think Wrinkled Four Top Men just still isn't really good enough. Uh, I, the ability just isn't worth it. Um, you're willing to play a Murz on three because you know that a zero token, a zero mana token, is coming back to you. With Wrinkled Four Top Men, you're getting an unpredictable card, and it costs two less, which does not necessarily make it free. So I don't think that Wrinkled Four Top Men is going to be something that you're, you're going to want to include unless you're specifically you know, building a deck that is meant to be a little more fun or is meant to, to really take advantage of those tokens. Uh, for Trekking Alderman, though, it can now take tank a little bit more damage. Uh, it can clear a little bit more. I, it's okay. I, I think it's definitely worth it uh, in a defensive role, obviously. Uh, not something that's going to be an auto-include for sure. Uh, Powder Tower. Mana cost reduced from 6 to 5, and the strength is increased to 8. I really do like this one. Uh, I'm not really sure how to evaluate it, though. I guess 
at, at five mana, that's kind of what I think personally Needle Blast sh should cost. So it's going to essentially be a Needle Blast for you. Uh, but it can also take up to eight damage. So your, your opponent kind of can't remove it for less than four a lot of the time. So you spend five on it and your opponent puts four into it. You're still losing that mana trade. But maybe you're you're making them attack something that they don't want to attack or position their units in an unfavorable way. Uh, if it does combo with Temple of Time, it's a little bit easier to pull off that combo. I think I would argue that if you're getting that combo to go anyway, you're winning the game. It doesn't really matter if it's uh, five or six, as long as you can get it to go. And I don't know that that one mana difference makes it significantly easier to make that work. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm going to need to see people that are better at the game than I am playing with this and seeing if this is reasonable, because I, I don't really know how to evaluate it. Uh, I think it's cool. I think it's good that they're taking a swing on it and making it making it uh, something that at least people will experiment with. And then last, Frontline Engineers. The ability will trigger from each friendly structure on the board instead of surrounding, so you don't need to play your structures up front at your opponent's baseline in order to be aggressive with Frontline Engineers. I don't know that that's really what was holding this card back. It's kind of just a big pile of stats. Is it above rate for four mana? Well, kind of. If you get one trigger, it is going to be a 410 at level five. So that is above above average strength. But for most, uh, I don't know, for, for some of the time, you're going to have a 4-6, and that's not good either. Uh, it's really dependent on your board state, and if you got some towers to stick, if you do get some towers to stick, you're winning that game anyway. Uh, you can start with an upgrade point into Frontline Engineers. I think that that's going to be a pretty strong opening. Uh, it's going to be hard for your opponent to deal with. It might help you snowball the rest of the game. Maybe this just kind of gives a little bit of love to the Mia decks because the Mia decks were recently hurt by the change from uh, Mia going from two to three mana. So uh, that could be something that, that works uh, to help it out a little bit. All right, there you go. Enjoy the enjoy the changes. Play with the new cards, and uh, let me know what you think.